United States. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Nutter? Mayor Samaras? Yes. Mr. Dakota? Here. Ms. Doherty? Here. Mr. Hoey? Here. Mr. Lay? Here. Ms. Martin? Here. Seven present. All right. This is a uh, meeting call to discuss some issues uh, that we need to, to handle, and the superintendent's prepared to give reports. The first re uh, piece of business is the report of the superintendent, 3.1 transportation report. Madam Thank Superintendent. You. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this uh, report is provided by Rebecca Duda, who is a coordinator of Family Resource Center, who has been uh, supporting our clerk, who has been um, the sole uh, person handling transportation in our transition. And um, it was brought to her attention that um, at present we have students who are riding the bus to school that who do not meet the walk zone criteria that, that's detailed in our policy. And I, I attach the policy for your review. Um, that of uh, the three quarter mile distance for our ele elementary students and a mile and a half for our middle school students, uh, we have approximately 200 students, 200 or 200 plus students who are currently on buses that are um, lower than that walking distance. However, um, the, the policy does uh, articulate that in um, particular areas where there is heavy traffic and there are no sidewalks that um, there could be special consideration given. So um, she's asking that uh, we consider doing um, just a, a check and balance on that and an audit, to, so to speak, an, our own internal audit to determine um, what, who these students are, where the areas are. Because one of the things, I looked back in notes from previous school committee meetings, and one of the things that came up was that would it be uh, beneficial for us to consider a crossing guard, um, working with the city in the next budget round to, to look at those particular areas, so um, to see if that would be more cost effective than adding additional buses. So that's one piece that she brought up. Additionally, um, she brought up that we have, um, we have about presently 80 plus students who are um, being bussed out of their zone to um, the Boys and Girls Club um, after school programs in the YMCA. And um, she would like to audit in turn, you know, our own little uh, audit ourselves to ensure equity for all families that we have children that um, we do have offerings inside of the, the zones for children. So we want to make sure that all the offerings are equitable and that um, going forward, if we can reduce cost, we would do that. What our goal would be is to assess this, bring it back to the committee, and then determine if we want to make changes for the 2019-2020 school year. We would send out notices before the close of school to all the families that would be impacted so that they can make um, their plans for the next school year. So I submit this to you as a report of progress. Any questions, Ms. Doherty? I think it sounds like a great idea to, to take a look at the transportation, see if there's efficiencies we can find uh, that will save us money, and, and to make sure that we are offering equitable transportation services to all our students. So I would be in favor. I'd make a motion to support the recommendation. A second. But I'd like to second, Ms. Doherty. Do you have a question? Our job is, oh, there you go. Our job is to service the children of Lowell. And, you know, nobody wants, I, and I don't care if you have a crossing guard, I would not want my son or daughter crossing Andover Street or Westford Street or Chelmsford Street. And so I know that the policy says, you know, and, and when there's no sidewalks. And if we have a bus that's going to that section of the city, that for whatever reason, 
that child is enrolled in the boys club or the girls club and the parent needs us to offer that we can't be so stringent that we don't service all of our kids as much as possible so while i agree we you know it is a good thing to look into let's just you know keep in our mind that our, our role here is really to service all the kids to the best of our ability however since you did bring up transportation um, first question is um, can we mayor request the um, city auditor to work with um, someone from either either Connor Baldwin Heather Varney or, or, or Rodney Conley and um, somebody from you know Mr. Hall or one of our legal team I would like to go through the um, transportation regular education transportation contract and and see you know how many buses we have what we're being billed for and what that contract you know stated when we when it got awarded um, you know it, it's still in the back of my mind that we had a, a transfer request for four hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars that disappeared and and that just kind of eats at the back of my mind so is there a, can I make a motion that well, we first of all there was a motion on the floor by Ms. Doherty that wasn't seconded was it Mr. Hoey seconded okay so would you repeat the motion please yeah. one step it was to support the acting superintendent's um, recommendation to do an audit and present findings at a, a later date do you want a roll call on this for this motion, roll call. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mayor Samaras? Yes. Mr. Dakota? Yes. Ms. Starty? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Seven yeas approved. All right, back to you. Do you want to make, Mr. Nutter? Do you want to make a motion regarding that? No, actually, um, Ms. Martin just gave me a good idea, so <laughs> I will. Uh, <laughs> I will I will wait and, and ask for a meeting of the finance subcommittee instead thank you all right uh, any other question regarding this matter mr. Dakota I believe you did you have your hand up no. we all said all right I need a motion to accept this the transportation report as a report of progress my mr. Nutter second by uh, miss Martin thank you all in favor thank you next under new business we have the consideration of a contract and appointment of acting superintendent's recommendation to appoint Billy Joe Turner as interim school business administrator, interim assistant superintendent for finance. Before I ask you to accept this, are there any questions that we want to ask the acting superintendent? Mr. Hoey. Thank you, Mayor. No, I just um, want to welcome her here. I think I'm going to support her nomination for this job. I just feel like I should say that uh, Dr. Kafawi recommended her by email to me not too long ago. So I hope we all support this uh, fine lady and uh, move on. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of the assistant sup the superintendent? Mr. Lay? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm wondering, uh, what was this been uh, uh, a no negotiation uh, being accepted? or uh, when Dr. Kofau was here, or yep. is this a... Uh, Madam Superintendent? Yes, this was negotiated when Dr. Kofau was here. Okay, and was the salary accepted as a... Uh, do you know what the salary was accepted back then, or...? It's a salary that's, that's in the current contract. The contract. Okay, right. thank you. Mr. Lay, any further questions? You all set? All set, thank you, sir. Any other questions? All right, I need a motion to approve Acting Superintendent's recommendation to appoint Billy Joe Turner as Interim School Business Administrator and Interim Assistant Superintendent for Finance. Motion to accept by Ms. Doherty, seconded by Mr. Dakota. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mayor Samaras? Yes. Mr. Dakota? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin. Yes. Seven yeas approved. Okay. Uh, 4.2 has been withdrawn, correct? 
Madam Superintendent. Yes, at the request of the candidate, um, the, the second contract has um, been removed. Thank you. Next is 4.3. Excuse me, Ooh. Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. Mayor, if I could, just to be sure, as we, we had approved the recommendation, I believe we also need to approve the contract for that position for the uh, interim assistant superintendent. We approved the recommendation, but we also have to approve the contract itself. Actually, you're right. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't me. That was Mr. Hall, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hall. We appreciate him being here. <laughs> right. Do you want to read that? All right, we have the, the approval as act, acting su assistant superintendent, and now we're approving the contract. Uh, roll call. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mayor Samaras? Yes. Mr. Takoto? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Seven years approved. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Before we, we move on from finance, just a question. Um, I know there may be a delay in the start time. Have you reached out to the, you know, uh, Councilor Leahy brought a motion forward last week to, and, and the city manager has offered any assistance. Um, so are we working with the city? Do we have somebody from the finance team coming down and helping out at this point? Not at this time, but I do have a meeting with the city manager tomorrow on another matter so I can I can bring that uh, subject up. I have also communicated with uh, Billy Joe Turner relative to her availability and we'll be communicating with her superintendent tomorrow to determine if we can do some uh, job sharing in the interim to make sure that we can be up and running and in, in a good place. But basically uh, the city manager is not going to assign anybody from her office but what she's doing is making her people available on an as-need as basis for, based on what the superintendent has requested. And they've already had a number of meetings, correct, Madam Superintendent? Yes, that's correct. Okay. But good questions at this particular time. All right, next. Sorry, Ms. Doherty. Thank you, Honor. Just, I know um, before we went back to the approval on the contract, uh, we heard that the uh, interim director of HR uh, the candidate has declined and I'm just wondering if we can get an update because I know this committee voted um, to do a search m several months ago for an HR for a permanent HR director and, uh, and and an HR audit so I'm wondering if there's any status update on either of those items Madam Superintendent. so I do I do have an update on the HR audit um, the we have scheduled um, Susan Mulligan, the HR director, and myself have scheduled for next week. I want to say it is on Tuesday. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday of next week with the auditor uh, to review the process and get ready for the audit to begin. So that is scheduled, um, and that was scheduled today. So that's done. Um, the on the the HR director. Um, I have been, you know, just today because we we knew we learned today of um, the decision uh, not to go forward with the one-year contract. So um, I'm working with Attorney Hall. We'll be talking with um, HR and um, bringing forward something for consideration to you because I think the position is uh, a pretty substantial position in the district and. Um, you know, uh, knowing the, the pay scale that is there right now, we want to be able to get the best candidate. And so um, I'll be bringing some updates forward to you. Ms. Martin, I'm sorry, Ms. Martin first. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I know that, is, and I believe it's what um, Ms. Doherty is referencing, that we had passed a motion to hire a, a search firm to, to conduct that search. I'm curious, so th that would be my first question if we can move forward with that. But secondly, there are certain, and I don't know if this company would fall into this category, but there are HR firms that would be able to provide uh, like an on-site interim for a year. 
um, who might be able to not only, you know, kind of begin that search and conduct that search, but also be able to, you know, be the on-site HR director, um, you know, for the year, you know, for a contracted, you know, amount, um, just as an option as you're investigating. Madam Superintendent. So I apologize, I misunderstood your, your initial um, inquiry. I know that um, Ms. Mulligan has uh, reached out to the agency and they've gotten, they've given her um, some paperwork relative to um, initiating that. So I know that is done. And I will reach out to her tomorrow about the other option. Mr. Hoy. Thanks, Mayor. The short conversation I had with Ms. Turner uh, was a lot about HR. I told her that's under, under her umbrella. I think when you get back your audit, you're going to see at least one clerk, maybe two clerks are needed in that office. Uh, if we could get maybe one clerk in there now, I bet you Ms. Turner could get us through a while on that job because our clerks in that office to me have done a wonderful job. I just think they're hurting for help, uh, Mayor. That's it. Thank you. Uh, also, just, you know, uh, I did talk for a few minutes with the superintendent today, and I was going to send out uh, a memo uh, tomorrow asking that the committee actually review this position. The thing is, I think we should really look at this position. Is it an HR position or an assistant superintendent of personnel, which it was at one time? This position is important in the school department, and I think what we have to do, we should review as many alternatives as we can at this point, discuss it, perhaps on the subcommittee and personnel, or something to that effect. But I think before we just go on and ask a, a, a firm to get us some candidates, I think we should really look at the job and say what are our, our, our expectations for this job because there are many issues that have been raised regarding this position, what it needs to do to encourage uh, minority candidates. There's so many things that we expect of it, but let's look at what the job should look like, the job description, and the proper title. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be requesting that if that would be okay with, with the school committee to have further discussion expanded discussion on this because every one of you at some point have raised an issue of concern and you've been correct and I think everybody here wants to make sure that whatever, whoever we have because Sue Mulligan's doing yeoman's work right now and she was a former assistant superintendent in this area and understands a lot of the issues. HR is, has one approach and assistant superintendent for personnel has another approach and, and we should look at what's, what best meets the needs of the low school department. Ms. Martin. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I absolutely agree with you, and I would actually say if we could um, maybe have that in the form of a motion this evening, okay. we could then move forward to call a, um, to poll for a personnel subcommittee for the purposes of reviewing the current job description, current uh, requirements of the position, with a, uh, a plan towards coming up with a plan moving forward. You just made my motion. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a second, second by Ms. Doherty. Will you please re read the motion? <laughs> if you can. <laughs> you don't give me time to write. You want time to write? My God. <laughs> to have a personnel subcommittee to review the, uh, yeah. The current, the current position of uh, HR. Thank you. <laughs> And, re and review and suggest any other alternative approaches to this. Thank you. Yes. I would just ask that if we could do that as soon as possible. I would really like to be able to move forward in this stuff. So, Ms. Martin, so. you'll poll the have the committee polled, poll. your subcommittee polled. And again, but, in the hopes but, that anyone who's not on the subcommittee would also certainly be welcome to come and, and be part of that conversation. But I'd like the uh, superintendent to have a little time to gather information together as to uh, approaches you'd like to see at this particular point. Thank you. Any other questions that we got in that matter? Okay. We ha now have 4.3, approval of acting superintendent's recommendation to appoint Mary Pine as acting assistant superintendent for student support services. Before I ask for a motion, are there any questions from the committee regarding this? Mr. Dakota. 
Um, I, I had spoken to the superint uh, acting superintendent earlier, and I was just wondering um, pay scales and so forth. And I, I'm, so I'm concerned about what are we going to be paying for that position? And because and, obviously we're spending a lot of money here, and I think we should be informed before we make a decision on that. Okay. Madam Assistant Superintendent. Uh, superintendent. So, um, in light of the current circumstances and my acting uh, position, I am, um, I, I really need uh, an acting assistant superintendent for student support services to address the immediate needs that I should be attending to and normally attend to to prepare for the beginning of school. And also, not only the beginning of school, but once school begins, it is a very, very busy time in the Student Support Services Office. Um, Mary Payne has graciously um, agreed to come forward um, to do this role with no additional compensation at this time for consideration. And I, I felt that that was important to bring forward to you um, because we, we are in the midst of an audit and um, at which time then we can bring forward to you a contract for consideration. Any, anything else, Mr. Dakota? You all set? Ms. Doherty? Uh, thank you, and I, I apologize if there was information here I, I, that I didn't see, but I'm wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, Ms. Payne's background and, and how she's qualified to step into those very big shoes. So uh, Ms. Payne has been a guidance counselor in the district um, for, oh my, I've been a guidance counselor since 1996. Step up, step up yeah. the mic, please. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> um, I started in Lowell in 1986 um, at Lowell High School as a student intern. I grew up here in Lowell. Um, from that position, I was hired as a peer advisor. I went back to school, became a guidance counselor. I've served in the role as a behavior modification specialist a guidance counselor, a career counselor at Lowell High School, and then as district support specialist at the district office. Thank you, and so all of those roles that Mary um, has served in, she's also served as uh, Healthy Life Skills um, and, and working with um, the, the school department as um, a health um, specialist and supporting our schools throughout the years. All of the roles that she has served in are all roles that fall within the realm of um, the, the student, the assistant superintendent for student support services. Not only that, but Mary Payne has intimately knows every staff member in the department by first name, and there would be no learning curve there, and that's a critical piece right now where we need, we need someone in this transition period. She has good working relationships. I think it's very important to note that she was, she's very humble, but she was nominated by her own union, um, all of her peers as Administrator of the Year this year. Um, so um, she is definitely um, someone who could step into the role and isn't afraid to ask questions when she doesn't have an answer, um, I have confidence that she could, she could serve in this role. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Hoy. Real quick, Mayor. Um, when you write a contract for her, or look at a contract, do we have to worry about how much time is in the contract? Because I'm just confused where the superintendent isn't fired yet and everybody's acting, do we have to worry any legal things that we have to worry about this higher? Madam Superintendent. Um, I'd ask uh, Attorney Hall, who I've been working with on this for the last week, to respond. Uh, Mr. Howie, if we reach that point, the contract would specify that there'd be certain triggers which would allow her to revert back into LSA and reattain her LSA rights. Um, if Ms. Durkin went back into that role or for some other reason. Okay, thank you. How's that? Any other questions? <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Lay? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so right now, um, may, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to um, uh, Ms. Mary Payne, 
Are you a now a guidance counselor? I, I, my certification, I do have a guidance certification. But she's not a presently. guidance counselor. But, but you're, that's you're, not, you're not as a guy, you're not a guy in council. No, I am not. I do not serve in that role. Okay. My, um, my, my question would be, um, while you're doing both jobs, could you handle both jobs? Are we, are we now, uh, when you become an acting superintendent, does that mean now we're going to hire another person to take over your new job? Uh, is that uh, the path we're going to take? So we would have to um, discuss that um, and consider and act someone in an acting role for the district support role. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lay, you all set? Um, I, I feel like I have more questions. I just don't know what to ask now because it um, feels like uh, now we, we are creating more issues, uh, more money going to be spent on, uh, on this process uh, that we, uh, that we are uh, dealing with. Um, when, when, we, when we voted last week uh, for uh, Ms. Durkin to be, an assistant, to be an acting superintendent, well, that was a natural process anyway. If we didn't even vote for you, you still become an acting anyway uh, last week. Uh, That's correct. Right, and, and, um, we, but we voted on it anyway. And um, for this time, uh, by accepting this, uh, uh, Ms. Mary Payne to be uh, an assistant superintendent, I just feel like we are, we are moving into another loop of uh, creating more spending uh, money. But I mean, wouldn't... Could I answer that a little bit? Sir, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what, what has happened, she's taken the position of the superintendent. As deputy superintendent, she would naturally be there anyways. She's left the position of assistant superintendent for, for uh, student services. It's an, op it's an open, empty position. So now, Ms. Payne will fill that position. It's there anyways in right. her position. So the thing is, it's not like there's a lot of new salaries. It, if, it's, it's almost like one, you find, because there's a replacement of one. The superintendent's salary is the one that's outstanding. Every other position. And, and I apologize. I, I tried to look for uh, Ms. Mary Payne on the, on, the, on the book, and I couldn't find her. Uh, She's a district support specialist in student support services. And, and, and uh, May I ask uh, what if look going forward when we would be um, writing up a contract for her position? I'm sorry to have you standing no there. Um, <laughs> um, how much salary increase percentage wise are we looking at? Are we? I think that's something we're going to have to negotiate, you know, um, with the candidate and um, but this. It's, it's a big job. It is a big job. It has uh, many departments that, um, that are uh, required for the assistant superintendent to oversee. Um, too many to name here tonight, because I heard people want to be out early, but um, if I, can, I would certainly be happy to bring those forward to you with the job, you know, the, the descriptions of everything that sh the oversight of that position. So, so I'm, I'm just curious if by natural uh, process, um, stepping up, uh, I'm not sure if, if I'm saying this right, but uh, you can correct me, <laughs> Superintendent, if I'm, I'm wrong. But couldn't you allocate some of the work among the peers that are already uh, among your team instead of uh, promoting someone else? Uh? I, in good conscience, no, I could not do that. I really couldn't. Right. Mr. Hoey, then Mr. Nutter. Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, if you look at the two jobs that we're trying in the HR office, you got um, under Mrs. Durkin's umbrella when she was the assistant superintendent, I think there was just too many things she's responsible for. That's just my opinion. Uh, the same thing with HR. I think um, the HR, I should say the CFO, the new CFO, I think one of her hardest things will be have to deal in with the HR. 
but after talking to both of these uh, candidates, I feel pretty secure uh, with hiring both of them. And the reason being is I think uh, she has 31 years. She's from the flats. That impressed me. <laughs> and uh, well, and then she has Miss Miss Durkin to guide her through all these uh, issues that she's going to face. So I think it's going to be good for the school committee. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Mr. Thanks. Mr. Nutter. I, I just want to be clear so that everyone understands. Right now, we have a, a, a superintendent who's out on administrative leave. Mrs. Durkin, in her role, gets no increased salary at this point for being the acting superintendent. Miss Payne is getting no additional funds at this point for taking over as the assistant superintendent in charge of student services. So, Mr. Lay, right now we're not adding any additional cost to this. What we're just, what Mrs. Durkin is trying to do is to put a, a team in place so that we're able to function as a school department until such time as everything gets cleared up. And then they'll come back to us as needed to fill those positions and talk about salary and all that, correct? Correct. That's uh, correct. Did I say, I mean, and my statement was th there is one salary that's outstanding, and that's the, the salary for the superintendent who's on leave at this point. Th that's the only difference. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the recommendation. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mayor, can I say? Yes. Thank you. So uh, would that be legal to have uh, like a s short, uh, I don't know how you say it, um, I know Mr. Hall would be able to answer that. If, should we write something to, to say that, you know, that we're not paying her anything extra Excuse uh, me. for uh, assuming this? I, we're gonna, the superintendent's going to negotiate that. There's going to be a negotiation for that. I think we'd be tying her hands up at this point if we do that. Is that what you want to do? Um, um, no, no, I don't mean to tie her hands. Uh, uh, but I think it would be, would that be appropriate or, or legal way to do it by or saying that th this is something we, when we vote on, we're not, we're not no, you accepting wanna make a, you wanna make, You can make a motion. Do you want to make a motion? No, a, a substitute motion. Are you trying for a substitute motion? Um, I don't know, I just want us to hear from a um, uh, counselor uh, if, if we could do that. Uh, do what? Write something really short saying that, you know, that uh, we accept, uh, we, we, we promote uh, Ms. Mary Payne to take a role as an acting assistant superintendent uh, without uh, additional uh, pay. That, I mean, you're now you're creating a whole uh, different scenario at this point. So we, we have a motion on the floor to, ex to have this vote, but we can have a substitute motion uh, is there any second to that motion? There's no second, it fails. Mr. Dakota. Um, while we're on this subject, is there a possibility that sometime in the ne near future that we could get a, uh, the job descriptions for those two positions, for the HR and the deputy superintendent, so that we have that to look at as well? I, I will certainly bring that forward. Be, there will be, um, my understanding from tonight's meeting, there's going to be a subcommittee meeting for the personnel for the HR, so that would, would go forward there. I can um, also forward the um, assistant superintendent's uh, position. Thank you. Thank you. And, and probably any other examples that you might need to, you know, review that. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Martin. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Just to, to go back one step with uh, Mr. Lay's concerns. I, I do think it's important to note that what we're approving tonight is the recommendation. What comes next is the actual contract. So that's when there's going to be a number attached to it and then we will make our decision, yay or nay, if you support whatever the, the superintendent has negotiated. So this voting yes tonight doesn't mean that you're approving a salary number. You wouldn't be doing that until we got a finalized contract that then that we'd then be voting on probably, I'm guessing, soon in the next couple meetings. I don't know if that Correct. helps. Uh, on Mr. Uh, Nutter's motion, and there was a second. Pardon? Mr. Hall, do you have something? Just briefly, may I, 
if, if I may, Mr. Lay, I think what Mr. Lay is trying to point out is that he wants to make the, the, this appointment be subject to confirming LSAA is not going to object and uh, ask for further uh, compensation because she is an LSAA member. We have from Ms. Payne that she's willing to do the additional duties now. I have had discussions preliminarily with LSA, but we don't have anything in writing um, from them yet. So I think that's what Mr. Uh, Lay but was. Could I say, but what I heard him say, what he did not want to give her any more money than what she's presently making. Is that right now, yes, Mayor, right now, Ms. Mrs. Payne has agreed to uh, help out for the time being, and LSA hasn't objected, but I think... Um, That's what's stated by the super acting right. superintendent. I think the acting superintendent said in the future they'll come back uh, with a contract, but I, it is a um, point to clarify that LSAA potentially could ask for compensation, so if there wants to be a friendly addition saying subject to LSAA's agreement, I, that may be something you want to consider. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Yeah. Um, there was a second, I believe Ms. Dory seconded Mr. Nutter's motion. No. Okay. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mayor Samaras? Yes. Mr. Dakota? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Lay? No. Ms. Martin? Yes. Six shades, one day approved. Okay. All right, under, uh, we're, we're ready for adjournment, but under Mayor's business and the City Council, I'm able to bring up certain issues uh, that are current. And I'd like to bring up one issue and ask the superintendent to uh, uh, speak on it. I was concerned about the uh, scheduling at, at the high school. I just think we should have make sure we have an update at the various meetings to ensure that we have a schedule for opening day of school. Madam Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that the last school committee meeting, the special meeting that we had, I reported uh, I had been in communication with the head of school, and uh, she had assurances from the scheduler that you know the the um, schedule would be complete for the start of the school year. Um, since that time, I've gotten some conflicting um, information uh, that's come from, not from um, the head of school. So I contacted the head of school and um, the, um, the scheduler who was in charge of um, creating it at Lowell High School. I met with them uh, last week and um, it is, I just wanted to share with the committee that um, he is assuring us he is going to be able to complete the uh, schedule. Um, it is going to take um, anywhere from 100 to 150 additional hours, which were pre-approved um, prior to um, my being in this position. So um, that he is working on that. We made a plan that we said that, you know, there might have been extenuating circumstances, but going forward, this cannot happen again. That um, we need to have a plan in place for December that we share with the committee about how we're going to roll out the schedule and um, that um, there will be no additional compensation for someone um, doing their job. So um, the the, what I did get, um, and I thank the head of school who's here today, um, did get an update today that the schedule is 50% complete at this point. Um, the Freshman Academy being complete, Lyceum complete, advisories completed with a few minor tweaks. Business department is complete. PE and health are currently in progress as well as culinary, foreign language, uh, which is starting tomorrow and special ed is still in progress. They have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow uh, to address some of the outstanding things that are um, giving them a few problems in the special ed area. So the core classes are going in, but waiting on one department should be resolved. That's a special ed tomorrow. So that's the update, and I thank um, Marian Bastide for that today. Ms. Doherty. Uh, thank you, Ronnie. Could you just remind us what were the circumstances that they are 
100 to 150 hours behind on the scheduling. So Ms. Bastide is here and she could speak to that. However, I th you can let me know if I've got it correct. So what was reported to me was that um, there was uh, a, an initial decision through the budget process to um, eliminate some uh, freshman academy staff um, to reduce the cluster model. But when the, the um, registrations the kept coming in and the students were coming in that the numbers were going up high, so they had to change they had to change their whole thinking and reassess which classes would be reduced with the, the budget cuts that were um, made. So that was one of the factors. The, the other factors were uh, related to our heating issues at the high school and the extensive snow days that pushed out the grades and all of that work that traditionally would be done a bit sooner. So those, am, am I correct? Did I get everything clear? Mr. Hoey. Mayor, before you adjourn, um, we, if you don't mind, I didn't come prepared, prepared for this, but uh, two really good athletes from Low High have passed away. One is the brother of Marty Laurie, uh, James Jimbo Laurie that I grew up with, and also uh, Raymond Chung Rivera that played for the University of Houston. So I don't know if we could have a quick a moment of silence before we adjourn. They most certainly deserve that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. We'll have a moment of silence. Dr. the Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Hoey, for bringing that up. I, I just wanted to finish off the, my concern about the high school uh, schedules. We worked in the past to make sure that the teachers received their schedules as they left school and the students had their schedules as they left school because the teachers, especially if their class schedules change or their, their programs change, they want to be able to prepare during the summer for that. And uh, so I'm very concerned that this happened and uh, I'm sure that uh, Ms. Durkin will be on top of it. Thank you, Mr. Nutter. I don't know if I need to request a suspension or whether we're in suspension, but um, it has come to my attention um, that there's going to be a story in tomorrow's newspaper or the day after regarding the situation of whether Lowell High will have a pool this fall. Um, I, I knew nothing. I didn't know there was an issue with the pool. So if you could give us any information on that um, through the superintendent or the head of school, I, I would just love a, a quick update. Madam Subject, you want to go ahead. So uh, I just learned of these, um, this, these issues this week as well. So I have been in communication with the head of school. Um, I, um, I am meeting with this city manager tomorrow and a team with along with Ricky Underwood and their staff who've been assessing um, the work. So I will have more for you, but at this time I, I don't have um, a whole lot of specifics, but they have been working um, to consider if potentially the UMass Lowell could support um, our student athletes um, with uh, their swimming through use of shuttles and um, so that is something that we have to to look at at this time could I I'll add to this but this information is coming in as we're speaking but the thing, the issue is how much it would cost to replace all of the heating equipment in the swimming pool okay and the question is whether we have swimming this year or not most likely uh, we're heading to not having it and the thing the, but the issue is the swim team for the boys and girls. Uh, there, there's negotiation with the University of Lowell for that. But there's other information as could there be any type of temporary repair, but uh, we're talking about a lot of money and that's being discussed. So the information is coming into the city manager's office at this point. 
uh, that will be discussed with the superintendent, acting superintendent and the head of schools. And uh, we'll provide that information to the school committee as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Hoey, seconded by Mr. Lay. Thank you.